It has been a while since I published my last Arch Linux installation tutorial. A few things have changed since then, so it's time to update it. This is Arch Linux installation tutorial 2020. First, you need to download the Arch Linux ISO. For that, you go to archlinux.org and here, in the top right corner, you click on this download link. And then you just find your local mirror and use any of the link provided here. You download the ISO file and its signature. Next, you need to check the signature of the ISO file to make sure it is the original one. Everything is alright, this file has a good signature, so we can proceed with the installation. First, you need to make a bootable USB, for that you can use this DD command or some specific graphical applications which I described in my previous video. When your bootable USB is ready, reboot your system and boot from the live USB. You will be presented this view. Here you need to select the top option and press enter. If you will see this black screen, you need to wait for a while and Arch Linux ISO will load. I will install Arch Linux in the EFI mode. You still can install Arch Linux in the legacy mode, but I believe nowadays it's better to use the EFI mode, because it is more modern. First, you need to make sure you have booted in the EFI mode. For that, you need to check that this EFI virus directory exists. And in my case, it does exist, so I have booted in the EFI mode. Next, we need to check the network connection. For that, you can ping any website on the web. I will ping Arch Linux. So the connection is working. Now we need to check our network interfaces. I have wired connection here. Everything is fine. In case you are using Wi-Fi, you need to configure your Wi-Fi using this Wi-Fi menu command. But I don't have Wi-Fi card on this system. Next, we need to update the system clock. By the way, you can find all these comments in the text version of this tutorial. And let's check the time. Everything is fine. Now we will start partitioning our disk. As you can see, I have only one disk here, so I will partition this SDA disk. I will use cfdisk command for that. I will create GPT partition. The first partition will be EUFI partition, and it is usually enough to allocate 512 megabits for that. Press enter. Now select free space again. This will be the root partition. I recommend to use at least 20 gigs for the root partition of Arch Linux. Enter. And again select the rest of the space and allocate it for the home partition. Now navigate to the right tab using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Press enter. Confirm that you want to write changes to the disk. And quit. List the partition again using the command lsblk. And you can see there are three partitions we have just created. Now let's format these partitions. The EFI partitions need to be formatted with FAT32 file system. And for the other two partitions I recommend to use XT4. Now we can mount them. So the root partition will be mounted to MNT. And to mount the second partition we first need to create the home directory in our root partition and mount the home partition to this newly created home directory. Now let's check the mounting points. As you can see SDA2 is mounted to MNT and SDA3 is mounted to home. This is exactly what we need. Now let's start with installing the system. To make minimal installation of Arch Linux you need to run the command packstrap. We will install everything to our root partition which is mounted to MNT folder. We will install base, the kernel and firmware. Press enter and the installation process has started. I will speed up this part to save your time. So the base packages of Arch Linux are installed. Now we need to generate fstab file. Let's check its content. Here is our root partition and home partition. Now let's change the root into the installed system, because previously we were logged in as Arch ISO users, but now we can log in to our newly installed system. We use arch chroot command, that will log in us to the root file system, which is mounted to MNT, and it will use bash as a shell environment. 
Ok, now we are root users in our newly installed Arch Linux system. And here we will set the time zone. For that you need to create a symbolic link of your location to the local time file. If you type usr share zone info and press tab twice, you will see possible options. You need to find your location and your city. In my case it will be Europe. I press tab again and I can see available cities and I will select Stockholm here. And I need to symlink it to ATC local time. Now when time zone is set, we need to set the time and check the time. This time should correspond to your local time. If it doesn't, please go back and make sure you have set the time zone correctly. Now we will set the locale. For that you need to open the file atc local gen. It says the nano command is not installed, we can install it. And let's open the locale file again. The file is opened and here you need to scroll down to English US UTF-8 locale. Uncomment it, press Ctrl O to write the changes and Ctrl X to exit the nano editor. And additionally, you also need to add this locale to the file atc locale.conf. Check the file. Everything is fine, so the locale is set. Now let's set the host name. In my case, my host name will be archpc and I need to add it to the file atc hostname. In addition to this, you also need to open the file hosts and add this line. If your system has a permanent IP address, use it instead of this IP address here. Again, Ctrl O to save the changes and Ctrl X to exit. Now we need to enable the network. First you need to install the network manager and enable it. Now set the root password, type your password and press enter, type your password again, press enter and you should see that your password has been updated successfully. So we are approaching to the end of our installation and the last step we need to do is to install the bootloader. In this case I will use group bootloader because I believe it is the most popular one and it is quite easy to use. And I will also install EFI boot manager because this is a UEFI installation. Now we need to create EFI directory in the boot directory and mount our EFI partition to this directory. Let's list the mounting points. Now we have SDA1 mounted as an EFI partition and the other two devices are still mounted as root and home partitions. Now we can install group. It will be 64-bit EFI mode into the boot EFI directory with the group ID and also add the option removable. This will secure a system in case of any UFI parameters will be reset or for example if you move your hard drive to another system. Group bootloader has installed without any errors and now we need to generate the group config file which is located in boot group group config. Now we need to prepare our system for the reboot. For that exit the root account unmount all the partitions and reboot. Hopefully you will see this group bootloader screen. Press enter and you will boot into your newly installed Arch Linux system. But there are still few things you need to add to finish this installation. Because now it is very minimal installation without a graphical interface. So let's install the essential packages and graphical user interface. You can log into this system using the root account and the password you have generated previously. And the first thing I will do, I will create a regular user. It will be part of the users group and wheel group with bus shell environment and the username LU. Let's set the password for this user. And I will also enable the sudo access for this user. For that you need to type editor nano with sudo and you need to use exactly this approach because this is the correct way to open the vsudo file. Ok, it says that this sudo command is not found, this is because the sudo command is not installed. So let's install it. And run this command again. Now the vsudo is opened and you need to find 
the line will all equal all all and uncomment it. Press Ctrl O enter to write the changes and Ctrl X to exit the nano editor. Now you can exit the root account and log in with your regular user. There is one more thing which I need to do before installing any programs is to enable the swap file. Because if you recall, when I created partitions on these systems, I did not create a swap partition. I believe it is better to use a swap file. I explained why I prefer a swap file in my previous video. Let's create a swap file of 3 gigs. Usually the swap file should equal your RAM memory. So permission denied because I need to run this command as a super user. So I just need to type sudo in front of it. So the swap file is created. Now we need to change its permission, format it as a swap file, I forgot sudo again, and enable it. Now we can check if we have swap file, so the swap file is enabled as you can see. And the last thing we need to do is to add it to the fstab file to make sure it is mounted on the next reboot. And add the swap information here. Ctrl O enter to write the changes and Ctrl X to exit the nano editor. Let's check the content of the fstab file. The swap information is added at the end. Now let's install the desktop, login manager, audio and some other useful programs. In this particular case I will install the XFCE desktop, but if you go to the text version of this tutorial you will see the commands to install other desktops. To launch the graphical desktop interface we need to create this xinit file. I will use xfce here, but again if you go to the text version of this tutorial you will find the commands for all other desktops. And enable the ydm login manager. Let's first test it right here by running the command start x. So we have the graphical desktop on our Arch Linux installation system. To make sure everything works correctly. Reboot the system. Congratulations, you have installed Arch Linux system. I believe this tutorial will be valid for a while, but in case any changes happen, I will always make sure that the text version of this tutorial is up to date. So please follow the link in the description. Thank you for watching.